Um, if you want to find a Bible, we're going to be in Matthew chapter 3 uh, in a few moments here. Well, we are officially in the season of Epiphany, and you might say, well, I, I'm not, I don't know what Epiphany is, and uh, if you, you've heard the, uh, the 12 days of Christmas, right? And so Christmas really goes for 12 days. Uh, Levi would not let us take our Christmas tree down until at least January the 6th, so we finally got it down, and um, got the Christmas decorations down here in this room, and so we're moving on uh, past Christmas uh, into this season of Epiphany, and the season of Epiphany is uh, the season of light, and really it means uh, Jesus is the light of the world, right? And so we are talking about the life and the ministry of Jesus, and the first thing that Jesus does when he comes on the scene in his ministry is he comes to his baptism, and so that's what we're going to be uh, talking about this morning. I remember uh, when I was in high school being asked the question, would you go and do anything as long as you knew that God was the one calling you or asking you to do it. Now, I remember struggling with that question a bit. I remember wondering if God might call me to live in an African hut if I admitted that I would do whatever he asked me to do. And I struggled with that question, and all of us, I think we, if we admit it, we probably struggle with that question on some level. All, all of us fear that God might call us to something that's difficult, something that's hard, something that requires tremendous faith. And, and again, I remember struggling with that question, but I also remember coming to a place where I said, yeah, I would go and do whatever God would call me to do, as long as I knew that God were, was the one calling me. And this morning we come to a story where a very important figure in God's story questions Jesus. In fact, he tells Jesus no at first. He refuses to participate, but then uh, as we watch the story unfold, he finally agrees. Uh, this morning, uh, let me invite you again to open your Bibles to Matthew chapter 3. Christy is going to come now and read Matthew chapter 3, verses 13 through 17. And let me encourage you, leave your Bibles open, uh, because we're going to study this together, and we're going to go back to the first verse of this chapter and, and read a little bit there too, so you'll want to have your Bible in front of you this morning. Matthew chapter 3, verse 13 through 17. Then Jesus came from Galilee to the Jordan to be baptized by John. But John tried to deter him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? Jesus replied, Let it be so now. It is proper for us to do this to fulfill all righteousness. Then John consented. As soon as Jesus was baptized, he went up out of the water. At that moment, heaven was opened, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, whom I love. With him I am well pleased. All right, thank you, Christy. So we get to verse 13, and we read that Jesus came from Galilee, this is where he was raised, right, to the Jordan to be baptized by John. Now, now we ask that question, Who's John here? We, we know there's several different Johns in Scripture. And as we read the first 12 verses of this chapter, we know that, that um, Matthew is talking here about John the Baptist. And I won't spend too much time explaining what you might already know about John the Baptist, but I think it's important to highlight who he is. So let's look back up at verse 1. We read in Matthew 3, verse 1, In those days John the Baptist came, preaching in the desert of Judea, and saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is near. This is he who was spoken of through the prophet Isaiah. A voice of one calling in the desert. Prepare the way for the Lord and make straight paths for him. So Matthew tells us that this guy named John the Baptist preached out in the desert. His job was to prepare the way for Jesus. Now we're told here in the scriptures that he was prophesied by Isaiah. You might also remember that his parents were Zechariah and Elizabeth. And that story is told in the first chapter of Luke. And you remember in that story that Jesus and John are relatives. relatives but their mothers are relatives, which then makes them relatives, right? So Jesus and John would have known each other before this instance here. Now, John the Baptist is an important figure in God's salvation story. And we read uh, the first part about his, uh, the uniqueness of his ministry. If you read about John the Baptist, you might remember... But he lived out in the desert, and I don't know about you, but that's not necessarily a place I'd want to live. And his clothing, his wardrobe, 
was made of camel hair. Now, it would have been a little itchy, right? Uh, living out there in the desert wearing camel hair. And his diet was one of locust and wild honey. Anybody having that for lunch today? Anybody? No, that's not what you would want to eat. He was also pretty bold. And he offended the religious leaders. Look down at verse 7. It says, But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees coming to where he was baptizing, he said to them, You brood of vipers! Now that would not have been politically correct in his day. Who warned you to flee from the coming wrath? Produce fruit in keeping with repentance. And do not think. You can say to yourself, We have Abraham as our father. I tell you, out of his stones, God can raise up children for Abraham. The axe is already at the root of the trees, and every tree that does not produce good fruit will be cut down and thrown into the fire. And his message was offensive to the religious leaders. You can imagine this guy, bold, right? Perhaps dirty, maybe even a little smelly, right? This is one strange dude. But God is using him in a tremendous way. He's here to notify the world that the Messiah is here. So with all this in mind, we come to verse 13. Jesus came from Galilee to the Jordan to be baptized by John. Now as we, we think about this and we think about Jesus coming out there, we ask the question, don't we, how much did John know about Jesus already at, at this point? What did he know about him? Certainly they were cousins, right? They grew up together. They must have spent time together, at least at some point in time. But we know that John doesn't fully understand Jesus' identity, yet at the same time, he knows there's something special about Jesus. If we read the Gospel of John, we're told, we're told that when Jesus is baptized, John, fully, John, John then fully understands who he is. But up until that point, uh, we don't quite know exactly how much John knows. Now, John has been faithful to all that God has called him to do. I mean, he moved out into the desert. He's speaking a bold message that will eventually get him killed, right? So he is one of these people that's doing what God wants him to do. And many people are responding to John. In fact, the reason that the religious leaders came out into the desert to check him out is because so many people were showing up. So many people were being baptized. And what is John saying? What's John's message? Look at verse 2. Verse 2 says that John's message is simple. It is repent... For the kingdom of heaven is near. In other words, John says, God is moving. God is active. God is bringing in his kingdom. So get ready, John says. Now part of what he's doing, he's baptizing people. That's why he's called John the Baptist, right? Now, what is baptism? What, what's baptism all about? And we can spend a lot of time talking about the significance of baptism uh, throughout church history. But the bottom line is that baptism is about the forgiveness of sins. It's about repenting. It's about turning around. It's about receiving what God has already offered. It's really a public declaration of what has already happened in our hearts. Luke tells us this in Luke 3, 3. Speaking of John the Baptist, he went into all the country around the Jordan, preaching a baptism of what? Repentance for the forgiveness of sins. So notice these two words. Repentance, that means turn around. You're going this way, turn around, and you go the other way. And as we repent, uh, John says, forgiveness of sins take, takes place. Now these are key concepts in baptism. Notice there are many who come. Many who desire this forgiveness. And when John speaks, people are saying, you know what? He's on to something. I want in on this deal. Look at John chapter 3, verse 23. Now, John was also baptizing uh, near Anan, near Salim, because there was what? Plenty of water, and people were constantly coming to be baptized. No shortage of people showing up to hear John the Baptist preach. And he's got plenty of water, and he's baptizing people. Now, I'm sure that some people came out of curiosity just to check him out, to hear what he was saying. But others, as they heard, God's kingdom is coming, they said, we want to be a part of that. We want to participate. And so they joined him in the water, and they were baptized as a symbol for the fact that they were going to repent and their sins were forgiven. So we get this picture of what God is up to. We understand 
that John knows who Jesus is, not exactly how much he knows about him, but it is into this context that Jesus steps up and says, I want to be baptized. Now, you can see, and as we see here in a minute, there's going to be some tension here because John knows that Jesus is special. John knows that Jesus doesn't need to be baptized. You, you know, you're baptized because you're a sinner, right? Jesus isn't a sinner. He hasn't sinned. And, and John somehow knows this. And look at what it says in verse 14 here. Verse 14 says, But John tried to deter him. I think that's a fascinating verse, isn't it? I, I mean, Jesus has traveled from Galilee to the Jordan River. He's come to be baptized. And he says to John, I want you to baptize me. John says, I don't know about that. The King James Version actually translates this verse, John forbade him. <laughs> Can you imagine forbidding Jesus or trying to deter Jesus? That word, what does that mean to try to deter? There's only one other place that uh, um, that word is used. In fact, no, there, there, that word is only used here in this one place, but another um, place in Matthew chapter 19, verse 14, um, there's a, a variation of that word. Matthew 19, 14 says, Jesus says, Let the little children come to me and do not hinder them, for the kingdom of heaven belongs to such as these. So that word hinder there is a form of the word that is used here in this text, the word deter. deter. In other words, John is trying to hinder Jesus. He's trying to, for, to keep Jesus from doing this. Again, he did not understand why Jesus should be baptized. And, and I believe this is a key point in today's text. Can you imagine telling Jesus no? I don't want to put too much blame on John here because John's heart's in the right place, right? I mean, John understands that he, in comparison to Jesus, is not worthy to baptize Jesus. And so there's a spirit of humility here. And I want, to, I want to affirm that I don't think John is necessarily in the wrong place, but at the same time, it's going to take even more humility to do what Jesus tells him to do. Look what he says in verse 14. I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? Now, again, if you'll give me um, a, a little bit of license here uh, to take this, because I don't, I don't think John's heart is a selfish heart at this point, but the words that he says here, I think are words we need to pay attention to, because Jesus tells him to do something, and then the first words out of John's mouth are, I need. Now, now think about that for a minute. God tells us to do something Oftentimes, that is our first response, isn't it? But I need. And again, John's heart, I think, is in the right place. But those are the words that we often say, isn't it? When God tells us to do something. God wants us to do this, but I don't know, God, because I need something different. I don't know, God, because that makes me really uncomfortable to do what you're asking me. To do, I don't know, God, because I need this or that. We have our way of doing things, right? We've identified what we're good at or what we're not good at. And when God often asks us to do something, our response is typically a selfish response. And again, I don't think John the Baptist is being selfish here. I want you to understand me. I think his heart's in the right place. But I think there's something in this text that we can draw from in terms of of saying, when God calls us to do something, when God tells us to do something, we can either forbid him, deter him, or we can join him. I need. Now, John certainly was not a selfish person, right? He'd moved out into the desert. He had taken on a lifestyle that many of us would not want to take on. And in fact, Jesus says of him in Matthew chapter 11, verse 11, I tell you the truth, among those born of women, there has not risen anyone greater than John the Baptist. So I'm not putting John the Baptist down, but I think this tension in the text is tension that you and I uh, can, th can think about and live into also. You know, the word here um, for deter is, is, is the tense is an ongoing tense. In other words, that means that we don't know how long this conversation went on. You know, I, I think it may have gone on a while. You know, G Jesus comes out, 
John said, John, I want you to baptize me. Well, Jesus, why do you need to be baptized? Well, I, I, want, I want you to baptize me, John. Well, Jesus, I don't think it's right for me to baptize you. You need to be baptizing me. And this is an ongoing conversation. It may have lasted a little bit longer than we even picture it lasting there. And, and John had a valid point, didn't he? Why did Jesus even need to be baptized? There are all sorts of theories in, in terms of why Jesus was baptized. And again, we could probably all build the case that he didn't need to be baptized, right? He didn't need forgiveness of sins. Some have said that Jesus was baptized in order to validate John's ministry. That may have been one reason that he was baptized. Others point to the fact that Old Testament priests were often baptized. And so Jesus was baptized uh, in, in a symbolic sort of way to say that he is our priest. All sorts of theories here. But I think the truth lies in Jesus' words. Look at what it says in verse 15 here. Jesus replied, let it be so now. It is proper for us to do this. To fulfill all righteousness. Why was Jesus baptized? Because it was the right thing to do, right? In other words, Jesus' baptism may, not, may have not seemed appropriate to John. It did not fit in what John understood as right in terms of Jesus. But Jesus comes to John and says, it is okay. I'm giving you permission. It's proper. It's fitting. This is a part of how God is going to accomplish his will. It is fulfilling all righteousness. Now think about John the Baptist for a moment here. We remember Jesus spoke about how great he was, right? Certainly he's an important part of God's story. He's the one who proclaims Jesus' is coming. And John's response here is crucial. Again, this deterring is an ongoing tense that it's used here. So I'm not sure how long it goes on here. But finally, what does John do? John consents. John obeys. And John baptizes Jesus. Romans chapter 8, verse 3 says this, God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful man to be a sin. Offering. Why, why was Jesus baptized? I think Jesus was baptized to identify with us. Jesus was baptized to model for us what it means to live out our faith, right? Ultimately, Jesus' baptism was to fulfill all righteousness. Now, what does Jesus ultimately do? Jesus goes to the cross. He dies for us. And, and many times when people are baptized... We, they are under the water and we say, you are dead now in your sins. You're risen to a new life. And so Jesus, in, in, in one sense, again, he's beginning his ministry. And up until this point, Jesus is obscure. People don't know who he is. He comes out and he steps into ministry. And the first thing that he does is he gets baptized. I think that models for us what it means to live a life of faith. What's the first thing that we do? When we understand that Jesus has died for our sins, we accept him. The most appropriate thing to do is to be baptized. It's a public proclamation to say, I am a follower of Jesus. Now, John didn't know how all this was going to work out with Jesus. In fact, John would be killed for his uh, faith. John, will be, John would be one of the first ones uh, to give his life uh, for the message of God in, in the New Testament. But John didn't have to understand everything. He simply obeyed. Look at verse 15. Then John consented. Look at what happens next. Verse 16. As soon as Jesus was baptized, he went up out of the water. At that moment, heaven was opened, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, whom I love. With him I am well pleased. What a scene, right? I mean, can you imagine being there and seeing all of this? I mean, the people around must have seen a tremendous thing, right? To see Jesus in the water. Clouds opening up. It's almost like the transfiguration, right? The Father speaks into this situation. So you've got the Father's voice from heaven. You've got the Son, obedient. Serving as, as, as you and me, right? In, in human form. He's going to die for us. He's identifying with us. He's baptized. And then the Spirit of God, like a dove, comes and lands on him. We have the Trinity in motion here. 
We're going to continue the story of Jesus through the season of Epiphany. Again, Jesus is baptized. is the first thing that happens here. Uh, but then Jesus is going to go out. He's going to call his disciples. He's going to um, go around town to town, healing people, doing some remarkable things uh, before he is betrayed by one of his own, giving his life on a cross for you and me. So we're going to walk through this season of Epiphany. We'll be talking about Jesus' ministry, which will take us into the season of Lent, which is six weeks before Easter. Easter's late this year, by the way. It's in April. And then we'll walk, we'll walk through the season of Lent together on into Easter uh, toward, toward the middle to the end of April. So you read this story and you say, well, that's nice to know that Jesus was baptized. It's nice to know that he identified with us. But, but what about us? What, what do we do with this? How do we apply this text to our lives? Certainly, the work of Jesus is incredible uh, or has in, incredible implications for us, right? He, he is God come to save us. Uh, He's beginning a ministry here that's going to take him to the cross. He's going to die for our sins. And certainly this is a part of the message that speaks to us today. But I think that an important point in today's text is this tension in the story. Whether or not John is going to join Jesus, God, in his mission. Whether or not he's going to be obedient in baptizing. Now, certainly John has good reason to deny Jesus' request. Again, John could probably make the case as to why Jesus did not need to be baptized. On one level, John doesn't even feel worthy. He doesn't feel adequate to do this deal. You know, sometimes God calls us to do things and we say, I don't know, God, I'm just not, I'm not worthy, right? And in one sense, it, it might, we might be humble and that it's appropriate, but in another sense, sometimes that's a cop-out, isn't it? Sometimes God wants us to do something. We say, God, you know, you could probably find somebody else better. Isn't that what Moses said? (laughs) God often calls people. And and sometimes that's our response. And again, John's response, I think, is a typical response here. I don't know, Jesus. I'm not sure if I want to participate on that level. But God had a plan. And John chose to be a part of God's plan. And finally, John said, okay, if you say so, I'll do it. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't fit my way of thinking. But if you call me to do it, I'll do it. If you call me to join you, I'll join you. And as we think about this coming year, you know, we're still fairly early in the new year. 2017 is a new year. We we think of New Year's resolutions. Do you guys have your New 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 Year's resolutions? Everybody go and join a gym, right? You're going to work out five days a week. You're not going to eat this much. or You're not going to, you know, have all these ways of thinking. Let, let me challenge you with a New Year's resolution for 2017. Why don't you agree to join God on his mission, whatever that might look like? Why don't you, why, why, why don't you pray this morning? God, whatever you want to do with me in 2017, I'm in. Not, God, I've got these plans and these goals. Would you join me on my mission but rather, God, I'll join you on your mission, whatever that might be. Whether it be uh, just living life, wherever that is, whether it's in your office or in your school or, or around people that you work with or in the gym. Man, the gym's a good place to, to interact with people, right? There's nothing wrong with that. And, and so maybe God would be prompting us somewhere to have conversation with someone. Maybe God would be prompting us just to live a life where people would look at us and go, I want what that person has. Whatever God is calling us to do, may we be attentive to that. May our antennas be up. May we walk around saying, Holy Spirit, lead me. Holy Spirit, guide me. May we wake up every morning just asking God, God, whatever you want to do with me today, I want to join you in that. And when God says to us, I want you to, you fill in the blank, no matter how hard it is, no matter how difficult it is, No matter how much it doesn't make sense to us, may we be willing to say, God, I'll join you. God, I'll do it. God, I'll participate. Can you imagine if John would have said, nope, you're not going to do it. I'm not going to baptize you, Jesus. What what would he have missed out on? (laughs) He would have missed out on the tremendous experience of baptizing the Son of God, of seeing the Father's voice and the Holy Spirit as a dove, and being a part of that. You know, I bet one day when we get to heaven and we get to hang out with John the Baptist, right? He'll tell us a story. 
He'll tell us how he didn't, he couldn't see how God was working and moving, but he decided to join God in the deal. And when he did, it was incredible. You know, I, I'm, a, I'm a confident that if we'll say yes to God, whatever that might look like, whatever he might call us to do, if we'll just say, yeah, God, I'll join you in that, we'll, we'll see incredible things happen. We'll see people's lives touched that we could have never imagined that God would have reached out and touched that person through us. We'll see things happen in our community that we'll think, I, I could have never seen that happen in Muncie, Indiana. But it's amazing how this is happening and that is happening. We had a cool year coming up, by the way, in 2017. In just a few weeks, uh, the leaders of the church are meeting to plan out a summer emphasis. It's going to be called Joining God in the Neighborhood. We're going to be thinking and talking about what God is already doing in our midst. We're going to hear speakers from all over Muncie coming in, talking about what God's doing in our city. And we're going to discern together how we might join God in what he's already doing. It's a great year, I think. It's going to be a great year, I think, for us at First Baptist Church. My prayer is it'll be a great year for you as you say yes to God in whatever he calls you to do. We're going to sing a song as we respond, as the band comes this morning, an appropriate song, Take My Life and Let It Be. It's a prayer. It's a prayer to God to say, God, would you take my life and do whatever you want in my life. And as we sing this song, maybe uh, you would respond to God right in your own seat as you stand there and sing. Maybe you'd, you'd stop and have a prayer. Maybe you'd want to come and kneel this morning. Maybe there would be some who just want to come and just pray uh, for what God is doing and going to do in our church this year. Maybe this morning you'd like to come. And maybe as you've, uh, we've been talking about baptism, you think, you know what, I need to be baptized. I need to, to step up and to make my faith public. Maybe you'd want to join the life of this church, and that would be a time that you would come now. Whatever God might be calling you to do, let's all stand and sing together.